Thanks very much, Jarl. Now let's take a moment to look at the agenda for today's webinar. We've already had some uh, welcome and introductions. Next, we will uh, engage in an overview of the Learning Communities Resource Center. We'll talk a little bit about the Community Action Economic Mobility Initiative. We will hear some transformation stories from Community Action Agency peers. You will learn how to apply for the learning community, and then there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions and receive real-time answers from the partnership team. And finally, we will conclude with a Community Action Academy live demo. So with that said, now I'd like to ask everybody to take a few moments in utilizing the chat window to share your number one or your biggest issue facing families in the communities where you serve. And as you do that, I, I would just like to take a moment to help to, to, to frame our, our conversation a little bit more. And it has to do with why um, the, the learning community and why this work. And the reality is that the impact of poverty uh, within our country is, is pervasive. In addition to it being prevalent, there are several complexities that are at work that require that we, we take a customized approach uh, to addressing those causes and conditions of poverty. And several of you have already started to reply in the chat window and offer um, those, those number one issues. But those, those issues span various domains. And really, it is our hope that within the context of the, the Learning Communities Resource Center that we would get on the inside of understanding what those needs or issues are and certainly tapping in to those specialized approaches or those promising practices that really uh, advance the agency's effort to maximize anti-poverty outcomes. And with that in mind, the, the other thing that I would like to call out for us is so our network, our network um, originated in 1964. It was born out of the war on poverty. During that time within our history, there were a lot of complexities or dynamics uh, at work impacting low-income families. And when our network was born, we were very resilient and adaptive um, to those needs, which allowed us to make some tremendous impact at that point in time. And really, the point is that as time has progressed, our society has evolved. And the truth is that the, the realities facing low-income families have also continued to evolve. And so that means that we cannot necessarily call on those same approaches or those same strategies that we used back in 1964 to move families and communities forward. And so really now is a time for change. And the Learning Communities Resource Center really lends itself to that in that through our framework or through our structure, Agencies have an opportunity to, in real time, test out um, some of the thinking, uh, some of those strategies or approaches um, with support, with technical support, in the safety of, of groups, with peers, um, with the hopes of undergoing a kind of, of transformation. And so as you look at the graphic, it's a graphic of butterflies undergoing the metamorphosis process. And we really see the learning community as a space uh, where agencies can undergo a, more, a metamorphosis as well and really engage in that transformation that speaks to that thorough or dynamic change in appearance. And at the end of the day, the goal is that as um, agencies undergo that transformation in mindset in terms of um, their understanding of how best to meet the needs of families and how best to take those family-centered approaches to ad advance families or move families forward, that um, ultimately their strategies 
their the the way they do business begins to change, and agencies similar to the butterfly on our screen be, begin to experience a new type of mobility or a new type of ability to um, connect more uh, responsibly and more effectively to uh, more families and on a to connect with families on a, a deeper level as well. And so with that said, the next statement that I think is important for me to emphasize for everyone listening to me today is that the learning community is for you. Really the learning community is for the entire community action network. And with that said, let's hold the fact that the learning community is for all of us uh, in, 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 in tandem with the purpose. Because understanding that purpose, uh, I think, reinforces why uh, it is the learning community is for you. And that purpose is that uh, the, the Learning Communities Resource Center's uh, purpose is to analyze community action outcomes and identify effective, promising, and innovative practice models that alleviate the causes and conditions of poverty. Ultimately, our end game is to build community action agency capacity to fight poverty more effectively. And we really see the learning community as a learning hub for the network to be able to do that. And so let's talk a little bit more about this whole notion of a learning community. There's a lot of research out about um, learning communities and how they can be effective in terms of organizational learning and transformation and change. And I really think the Harvard Center on the Developing Child really touches on a, a frame that, that aligns best with our approach uh, within the Learning Communities Resource Center. And within their definition, they speak about um, providing a space or structure for people to align or to come together around a shared goal. And for, in addition to that alignment to that shared goal, uh, for the communities to connect in around an aspirational and practical goal. And so one of the things that we will, will do is certainly motivate or stimulate agencies in that whole ideation process to sort of think about what those changes um, are that they want to make or those new programs or new innovations that they want to engage in, but at the same time helping agencies uh, identify attainable or practical goals. And here is what I love in this definition. It says they connect with people, organizations, and systems that are eager to learn and work across boundaries. And within the learning community, uh, the community then serves as a microcosm of our, our larger network, which spans our entire country, and so that affords itself to uh, agencies who come from rural places, urban places, more diverse places, more homogenous places. Uh, so there's just a whole variety or diversity and capacity uh, of our agencies, but being able to cross those boundaries and cross-pollinate, as it were, ideas and learning and strategies and practices really create an opportunity for a, a different kind of growth and transformation for us. And the other part of that definition uh, that we see speaks to this whole notion of a common agenda, metrics, and outcomes. And so there again, as we are engaged in this innovation process, we're still at the same time connecting all of our efforts towards those common goals or those common metrics that will ultimately uh, support the effective telling of our story of impact for children and families and for communities. And Here's the, the next and final point about this definition that I think is just very critical. These communities enable participants to share results and learn from each other, thereby improving their ability to achieve rapid yet significant process. 
And so within our framework, there's an opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer learning, that cross-pollination of ideas, as I've already suggested. And in doing so, it really enables us to share knowledge and to build knowledge collectively in much more of a rapid fashion. And so with that said, let's take a moment to look a little more specifically at how the learning community is structured. And so our learning community is comprised of topical uh, learning community groups. We call them LCGs and Communities of Practice, COP. And all of those are related to specific anti-poverty focused topics. In addition to that, while each of the members in the LCGs or the COP will work related to their shared topic or the same topic, they will have an opportunity to work on some specific agency-based goals or programmatic specific goals as a part of their efforts within the learning community. And the cool thing is that each of the learning community group members and the community of practice members will have access to customized technical assistance for free from subject matter experts and from peers. Additionally, uh, as I've already suggested, the learning community environment will be open and conducive to experimentation and innovation. And ultimately, our goal is to, to really perpetuate or to uh, motivate that learning to just be spread throughout our entire network. And so there are lots of opportunities for um, the sharing of lessons learned from peers within the learning community um, for the sake of practice transformation. And so as we look at the year one framework for the learning community, uh, the, our, the partnership team has really brought a lot of intention around making the, the information and really the learning process as accessible as possible possible to the entire community action network. And that is why we say the community action that the community action learning community is for everyone. And so the ways in which we will do that and are doing that is through our national webinar series, which are, will be led by uh, industry experts and those webinar presentations, all of them will be open to the entire network as well as resources that we will develop as well as research. We will disseminate, disseminate those to everyone. There are peer learning opportunities that everybody can take advantage of and there are technical assistance opportunities that can be taken advantage of as well. And so as we look at the, that that, that base or that foundation, uh, then agencies have an opportunity to select different levels of engagement. And one level of engagement that I would like to emphasize uh, at the top uh, right of the graphic is our intensive learning community groups. And those intensive um, learning community groups include our um, integrated services to improve impact, financial empowerment for families, a whole family approach to economic mobility from poverty. And within the context of those intensive um, learning community groups, agencies will have an opportunity to um, participate in monthly national webinar presentations, um, access the Community Action Academy, engage in peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities. They will have access to subject matter experts, they will uh, access customized technical assistance. They will receive piloting and implementation support, engage in regular webinar check-in meetings with peers and subject matter experts. Uh, they will be able to identify um, and basically um, help to develop resources that can be shared across the larger network. And they will have learning opportunities at our partnership annual meetings and have an invitation to our whole family approach uh, institute that we'll say a little bit more about later within this webinar. The next level of engagement that I would like to highlight for us 
is our open learning community groups, and those learning community groups include decreasing family homelessness, results at the community level, health intersections, cultivating data-centered organizations. And for all of those um, open learning community group participants, they will have access to uh, a mini series related to their topic area as that are webinars, as well as access to optional affinity group meetings. They too will have access to the Community Action Academy and through the affinity groups and the webinar presentations, access to subject matter experts. They too will be given a wealth of resources related um, to the various presentations that are shared and then also opportunities at the partnerships annual convention and an invitation to participate in the Whole Family Approaches Institute. And so then finally, that next level of engagement that we're very excited to launch um, this round of the project is our communities of practice. And we bring with us um, to this new um, opportunity of engagement our work with the Rural Impact um, Project, which has been around since 2015. And it has really informed our efforts to establish what we're calling the whole family the whole family approaches, a uh, whole family approach to economic mobility from poverty community of practice. And participants in that group will have access to the monthly um, national webinar presentations, access to our Community Action Academy, peer learning opportunities, access to um, subject matter experts. Um, customized technical assistance, really all the things that I've already mentioned that the open and the intensive um, learning community groups will have access to, but then in addition to that, they will have access to monthly coaching as well as technical assistance from the Community Action Data Interoperability Project. And so hopefully that sort of gives you a sense of our overall framework. So now I'd like to take a moment to talk a bit about our process, specifically for our intensive learning community groups. Um, the groups will progress through four phases, those phases being formation, knowledge building, implementation, practice transformation. So um, during the, between February of 2018 and August 2018, agencies will progress from the formation or through the formation and knowledge building phases. And then between August of 2018 through January 2019, they will progress through the implementation and practice transformation phases. And so um, what I will say in addition is that as the learning community groups are progressing through those phases, uh, they are connecting the dots uh, related to some important elements all along the way. And so they will incorporate data tracking and analysis. Um, they will incorporate ROMA principles and also the national performance indicators and annual report. And in some ways, you can sort of think about um, the learning community actually sort of gives agencies an opportunity to sort of think about these things within context, which, which ultimately helps um, the agency's ability to plan more effectively uh, in the achievement of goals, but also to analyze that data more effectively. And I think um, it's best illustrated on the next, next slide that speaks about our goal planning process. And um, it's very much aligned with results-oriented management and accountability, which is um, our performance management system. We call it ROMA. Uh, but as we think about the whole goal planning process, it's a way in which um, agencies are able to practice the implementation of ROMA. And so what I like to say is if an agency is a part of learning the learning community, they're going to automatically learn about ROMA, but then in addition to that, they're going to learn how to implement ROMA in a, in a more effective manner um, in that from the very beginning, we work with agencies to clarify what those needs are that they want to address during the course of their time within the learning community, and then what their anticipated outcomes 
or national performance indicator targets might be. And then our work um, during the course of the project is really identifying and also testing out those strategies and services that the agencies might utilize to achieve that ultimate impact that really um, places a crack in the foundation of poverty. And as I've already alluded to earlier, um, along the way, um, agencies are continuing to connect the dots uh, related to data collection, analysis, and reporting. And so now let's take a, a, a few moments to emphasize some of the key significant features of the learning community. I've already mentioned our national webinar series um, in which we are excited to offer uh, webinar Wednesdays. And so we invite you to just go ahead and set aside Wednesdays, oftentimes at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You can expect it. A, a, a national webinar presentation related to one of our promising anti-poverty um, practices to be shared um, from our subject matter experts. And so we invite you to mark your calendars for webinar Wednesdays where all of our knowledge building will take place within the learning community. And that is available to the entire network. Additionally, I am pleased to convey that the partnership team has worked diligently with the um, participants from the last iteration of the learning community to develop several new publications. And several of those are highlighted in our anti-poverty case study series, but there are several other publications that we will be releasing in the coming months to build capacity for the network. And then in addition to that, on an ongoing basis, we engage in constant research to identify those emerging um, uh, topics or, or findings related to our promising anti-poverty practices. So now a little bit about one of our brand new uh, features of the learning community, Community Action Academy. Community Action Cad Academy is an online um, platform that is housed within the Moodle system. Moodle is oftentimes used by colleges and universities. But with Moodle or with Community Action Academy, the Community Action Academy, it will provide an online learning platform designed to provide learners and trainers with a single, robust, secure, and integrated system to create um, personalized learning environments. And so to say that a different way, that is pretty much the space that we will use to share information about um, what is what persons need to expect in the learning community. And it even begins with the application process, so you're going to be able to apply in community action. Um, in the Community Action Academy for the learning community. That will be the main online learning hub for our intensive LCGs in our community of practice. Additionally, agencies will have an opportunity to access on-demand videos and resources, activities and assignments. There are opportunities for peer engagement and discussion through that platform. And then we will be able to track the learning process for all participants in that system. So now at this time, it is my pleasure to pass the baton to my wonderful colleague, Ms. Jeannie Chaffin, who is a consultant um, to the partnership for our Community Action Economic Mobility Initiative. Jeannie is really serving as the, the lead uh, for that effort and has played a vital role um, in designing this initiative and serving as a thought partner with the partnership as we think about what it means to mobilize um, families and really take a whole family approach to meeting um, families' needs. And so at this time, I am happy to hand off to Jeannie. Jeannie, thank you for joining us.